So many people have told me stories of how they've gone trekking through the wilderness and landed up having to spend the night in the bush because they got caught in a storm or something similar to that. And it's a difficult call to make because do you try and get off the mountain in the weather um, or do you try to hunker down, build a shelter and um, wait for the storm and the worst to pass before you try and make it home. Here is my breakdown of how to build a shelter in cold and bad weather conditions and to stay warm through the night. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. As far as campsite selection goes, I'm going to try not to be in the bottom of a dip um, in the ground because cold air will sink into that and you'll feel that the temperature differs there. I'm going to try not to be too close to water because water can make the air colder. What I have behind me is a nice rock shelf that will shelter me from most of the wind and most of the rain but not everything. The trees, other than providing wood for my fire, are really helpful for also breaking the wind. Ideally, you want to hang your gear off the ground. If any of your stuff gets wet, it's gonna transfer that moisture to you. Moisture is what causes us to suffer hypothermia much faster than we would otherwise. You're going to lose heat through conduction so fast because of that moisture, and that goes for your gear as well. So if you do put your gear down, try not to put it on the ground, if you can help it. Now it's been raining on and off all day. Um, I get wet and then I get dry, then I walk through the bushes, then I'm wet again. My first priority right now is to get a shelter up. The wind is gonna come from that way, which means it's gonna blow water and rain this way. So I want to make sure that my back and the back of my shelter face is there and I've got a fire in front of me. I want to make sure that my shelter is nice and compact. It's nice and small. That way I can be sure that I'm going to retain the most heat inside my shelter. That should be just high enough for me to be able to sit upright inside my shelter. I'm also going to capitalize on any sunshine that I foresee. If I can, I'm going to try and face my shelter in the direction of the sun so that I can warm up in the sunshine. At the moment, I'm just tying off what's going to be the roof of my shelter. I really prefer to have a ground um, sheet on my shelter a little space um, that I can sit on and lie on but first I want to put some debris underneath so that I'm not exactly completely on the ground. Now this stuff is super wet so I'm still going to need to put something waterproof like seriously waterproof between myself and that otherwise I'm just going to get cold. All of the foliage around here is wet at the moment. You're going to be really hard pressed to find something dry. Um, usually we use nice dry foliage. The reason why this is still going to help, despite the fact that it's wet, is it's going to create a layer of air because there are multiple leaves between myself and the ground. It's also going to allow for water to channel through it rather than go directly onto my top and also to prevent conduction between myself and the ground so I don't lose as much heat. Now before I put my ground sheet or the floor part of my top down. I am going to pull the twigs out of my hair and then put a mylar blanket over this foliage. The reason why I'm going to do that is because mylar blankets are so waterproof. They're basically a layer of plastic with some silver lining on it and um, it's going to prevent the moisture from the ground coming into my shelter. So that mylar blanket is gold right now. Even though this top is 3000 millimeters waterproof I still don't want that moisture right on my top I'd rather put the mylar blanket between myself and the ground at this stage I've set my shelter up obliquely so this is a diamond shaped top it's meant for um, putting up over a camping hammock as it turns out when I do that I have a little piece of wall on the one side 
and I can use that to put my gear in and use it as a side wall. The other advantage of the shelter is that I've got a roof, I've got a ceiling, I've got a full wall at the back so I can block out any wind or any rain depending on which direction the wind is coming from or the rain is going to come from. I'm going to turn my shelter so my back is basically to the rain. I've also got a floor so that basically creates another space or another layer between myself and the ground. The silver lining in this top, this is a uni gear top, and the silver lining is definitely going to help me to stay warmer, um, but it's not going to be quite enough in like severe cold temperatures. I can actually bring this down a little bit here so that the hot air would accumulate in the higher part of my shelter, um, but then if it does rain, water is going to come running down here. So it's a little bit give and take, depending on your conditions that you're going to face, um, you're going to make that call. The likelihood of you finding dry wood after there's been a heavy storm or bad weather is very scarce. I've gone around, I've looked in all of the crevices and all of the places that I reckon would have stayed dry. Ideally, you would find something like standing dead wood and if you're in a pine forest, you can harvest some resin or some fat wood from the pine. It's also the reason why we should always carry a little bit of tinder in our fire kit with us. But at least if you can't find something dry to start your fire, you've got something to ignite your fire to burn for a few seconds while you dry out little bits of kindling. I've just made a couple of shavings with a little piece of fat wood that I keep in my um, fire kit. So I'm going to put some of this grass in with my fat wood. You can tell the air is quite humid. We should always carry a little bit of tinder in our fire kit with us. So that at least if you can't find something dry to start your fire, you've got something to ignite your fire to burn for a few seconds while you dry out little bits of kindling. If I am really concerned about cold temperatures, I can make a long log fire here. Um, it won't be quite as long as I would like it because I don't want to set the rest of the forest on fire but I can make a long log fire in this space that I'm sitting in right now. Um, having said that, remember that you don't want your fire to be too close to your top and you don't want it to be underneath any of your guy lines um, because you're going to burn your shelter. I'm having a really hard time keeping a fire going here. So ideally make sure that your fire is a, about a meter away from your shelter. You'll still be able to get some of the heat in your shelter um, and that will help to keep you warm through the night. But I'll give you a couple more tips just now on how you can stay warm once the sun goes down. That's not even burning. If all else fails and your materials are just too wet, dig around in your bag, see if there's something else that you can use to start your fire, maybe something like hand sanitizer or even petroleum jelly, Vaseline, that stuff is going to burn. Let's try that. Let's try again, this time with some hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. And this stuff is wet. As you can see, in wet weather and very humid conditions, it might be really difficult to get a fire going. Not just because your materials are partly wet, but also because of the humidity in the air. Um, so for that reason, make use of whatever you can. If you don't succeed at first, try again, but don't become impatient. So the temperatures are dropping quite fast now. As you can see, so this fire is coming at the right time. Seriously need some warmth. A couple more things you can do to try and stay warm is try to warm your water. Um, drinking cold water is going to reduce your core body temperature. So drinking or eating something warm is definitely going to help you to thermoregulate. The other thing that you can do is if you have something like, that's the lid, if you have something like a canteen cup like this guy over here. You can use this to put some rocks in it. Let me find a rock now. Don't put the canteen on the fire, but you can put the rock nearby the fire, either on the side or just to the bottom of it. You don't want it in the fire because it's gonna split the rock. Um, so ideally, I'm stacking some rocks just around my fireplace. I can take those rocks out 
and I can put them in my canteen inside my shelter, sort of like a little stove would be. But the canteen is going to keep it from actually burning my top. If you've got something similar to a canteen, um, maybe you've got a little cooking pot. You can put some hot rocks in your cooking pot. Just make sure that you're not going to burn, but you can actually use that to keep warm inside your shelter. Whatever water you warm up and you don't drink, you can keep that against you as well. Once again, make sure you don't burn yourself. Put it back in a sheath, even if it's warm, um, and then you can use that similar to a hot water bottle. You don't want it to be boiling, you just want it to be warm. It has to be like at a drinking temperature. Once you've got your fire going, you can start getting concerned about taking off anything that's wet and drying it. So this guy line over here is actually in the perfect position for me to hang some of my clothes if I wanted to dry something. Um, and that will help to dry it faster, except if it's raining. So if it starts raining again, then I've got to bring that in and I've got to put it inside my shelter and hope that it gets dry from hanging on my ridge line here at the back. Ideally, I don't want wet clothing inside my shelter. Any moisture or condensation from those clothes can go and sit on the inside of my shelter. It can drip down onto me. It can get stuck on me. And then I will also lose body temperature because of that. So ideally, I'd want wet things outside of the shelter, dry things inside the shelter. And I'm just going to turn the lid onto that. I'm not going to close it completely because I want it to cool down just a bit you'll start to see that that heat, just as it swirls, just as the smoke indicates where the heat is going or where the air is going, that heat will also enter your shelter. Um, and that ends up creating a sort of microclimate inside my shelter that will keep me warm. You can really um, use pine for so many uses in survival, particularly making tea, because it's so high in vitamin C and vitamin A, they used it to treat scurvy many years ago. So now I've got some warm water instead of cold water to drink and this is also going to help me to maintain my core body temperature. The very first layer of my shelter is actually my clothing. So that's why it's so vital to have a decent base layer. A polyester, polypropylene or a merino wool base layer is really going to help you to stay warm. It really makes a difference. Um, layering your clothing correctly is also going to make a difference. So make sure that you're waterproof on the outside or windproof in the very least. Um, make sure that you've got something um, like a fleece or a wool jersey underneath so that your layers are correct and you maintain your body temperature. Especially when you start to sit down and you become inactive, that's when you really want your body heat to stay inside. Secondary to your clothing in terms of shelter, is your sleeping system and ideally what you want is something like a goose down blanket or a wool blanket lately we do have synthetics that do the same job something warm that you can sleep in um, is going to help you to thermoregulate as well so this is a camping hammock quilt what is nice about a quilt is it basically wraps you in a thick layer of down or a thick layer of insulation. If you're going to be in cold weather conditions, ideally you want to shop around for some or the other sleeping bag that is rated for cold weather and you want to be comfortable at the temperature that it's rated for. The weather is acting up again so I'm adding some more rocks around my fire and I'll use those shortly. So the hot rocks that I've now got around my fire I can remove from there, I can stack them in a row right around my shelter. The heat from those rocks will continue to emanate for quite a while. And if I wake up at night and I'm feeling cold again, stoke my fire again, put the rocks back by the fire, let them heat up again, pack them around my shelter again, it's definitely going to make a difference um, to your core body temperature. Well guys, that's it for me on top camping in cold conditions. Do try out some of these tips, let me know if they work for you, what circumstances you've used them in. Let me know if you've ever gotten stuck on a mountain or in the wilderness when you didn't want to be stuck for so long, how you survived and how you stayed warm. Until the next time, live ready.